Our scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of John. We'll be reading from the 15th chapter, beginning at verse 10. Listen to the word of God. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because a servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. As we have celebrated, today is Veterans Day, also known as Armistice Day. It celebrated the end of World War I, the war to end all wars, on the 11th day of the 11th month at the 11th hour. A year later, President Woodrow Wilson called for the nation to remember all those who had died in that war in their country's service and to make the day an opportunity for Americans to show their sympathy with peace and justice in the Council of the Nations. Now in 1927, Congress called for the display of the U.S. flag on government buildings. And then in 1938, Congress called for the observance of Armistice Day in churches, and in schools, again dedicating the day to the cause of world peace. Armistice Day became Veterans Day by an act of Congress in 1954, changing its purpose and its scope. President Eisenhower called on the nation to remember the sacrifices of those who fought in all our nation's wars to celebrate the contributions of all the veterans service and to rededicate ourselves to the task of promoting world peace. It is Eisenhower's call that remains the threefold purpose of Veterans Day this day remembering those who fought, those who fought and died, remembering all veterans and celebrating them, all of you who are veterans, and promoting an endearing peace. I cannot say endearing today. I don't know what the problem is. But anyway, promoting an endearing peace. Our scripture today says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And we could certainly use that verse to describe our veterans, couldn't we? So 
So many have laid down their lives in service to their country for the lives of others. Both those who fought alongside them and those at home who our vets wanted to keep free. I am not a veteran, but I come from a family of veterans who proudly served our country. And you may argue with me about this, but I'm gonna put it anyway. From my great uncle's service with Sam Houston in the fight for Texas independence, my great grandfather's service as a Texas doctor in the Civil War, both my parents served in World War II and my son served in Desert Storm. I am proud of each of their service to our country. Today is the day that we remember all those who have served, whether they served in wartime or peacetime, whether they served overseas or here at home, they stepped up, you all who are veterans, stepped up and made a difference. And we are grateful. And we thank each of you who are veterans. <clears throat> Our scripture says, greater love has no man than this, that a man lays down his life for his friends. And we think of those who served their country and their fellow man. But the scripture is really about Jesus and how he laid down his life for all of us for the atonement of the sins of humankind and how he rose again so that we have hope for life eternal. And folks, that's the good news of the gospel. But our scripture here goes on to say, and I'm using the voice paraphrase translation, and this is Jesus talking to his disciples. I don't call you servants any longer. Servants don't know what the master is doing. But I've told you everything that the Father has said to me, I call you friends. You did not choose me, I chose you. And I orchestrated all of this so that you would be sent out and bear great and perpetual fruit. This is my command to you, love one another. Jesus chose us, each of us. And I want you to hear that today and every day. My friends, we are chosen. Chosen by Christ, who is the chosen one himself. He wants us. He wants all of us. He wants each of us on his team. Not for what we can do or can't do and not for our abilities or our lack of abilities, but because he loves us. And he wants to show his love to us and through us to others, those out there. He knows who we are. He calls each of us. He knows what we have done and he knows what we will do and he chooses you and me not to be his servant, not to be his slave, but to be his friend. Because Jesus is love, God is love. Jesus knows us and he loves us. 
He loves us so much that he became one of us. And that's the part that makes the gospel such good news. Jesus has walked our walk, and he did it as a friend does it. Not simply to show us how it should be, but to be our companion as well, to be our guide, to support us as well as to be our teacher. And he does it without a word of judgment, except that judgment that a friend makes, a judgment of mercy, a judgment of encouragement, of gentle correction. We are his friends. We are chosen by him. We are appointed to bear fruit. Fruit that will last. Fruit that will please the Father. So as you go forth from this place, this day, go knowing Christ has chosen you. He finds you worthwhile. He values you. He thinks each of us is important. Jesus wants to be our friend. I think that's something we ought to rejoice about. Christ, our Lord, Christ, our Savior, Christ, our friend. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen.